Now, A Current Affair continues its own investigation into the assassination of John F. Kennedy with more startling revelations from secret government files. Exclusive, A Current Affair solves one of the great mysteries of that day in Dallas. The case of three hobos arrested and released by police. Were they part of a conspiracy? After 28 years, their story is finally told. So they took us off on that end, took us through here, marched us to jail. Exclusive, another conspirator who raced his friend, Lee Harvey Oswald, to kill the president. I want him dead. I would have shot him myself. I would have stood there with a rifle and pulled the trigger if I'd had the chance. We'll talk to JFK director Oliver Stone. I feel like I'm on the right track and I'm closer to the truth than the Warren Commission was. And we'll hear what America thinks, should the secret files be opened. They've been hiding enough stuff in this long enough. I think that it, they should be opened. It was dogged detective work that led us to Harold Doyle, and it's led us to another mystery man as well. I wanted to shoot him. I wanted to assassinate him very much. He was Lee Harvey Oswald's buddy and co-conspirator. Now he tells of the race to kill Kennedy. That's next. <laughs> John was murdered. He was murdered in a dirty and a foul conspiracy. We'll have more from JFK director Oliver Stone later in the show. But first, the end of one man's 28-year vow of silence. A shadowy figure named Kerry Thornley helped Kennedy investigators get inside the mind of his buddy, Lee Harvey Oswald. Thornley testified to the Warren Commission, but like their secret files, his lips have been sealed ever since until today. Steve Dunleavy was the first man since Chief Justice Earl Warren to hear Thornley's bombshell story. First time in decades he emerges from the shadows. Grim shadows that have cast a pall over a man with a frightening secret. A terrible boast. I wanted to shoot him. I wanted to assassinate him very much. You have just seen and heard a man called Kerry Thornley who used the exotic background of New Orleans as his headquarters for a deranged plot to assassinate President John F. Kennedy. His one regret, his good friend and Marine buddy Lee Harvey Oswald got there before him. In fact, he was so close to Oswald that he even wrote a book about him before the assassination. Now again, listen to the words of Terry Thornley and shot him. I want him dead. I would have shot him myself. I would have stood there with a rifle and pulled the trigger if I'd had the chance. Kerry Thornley talked for the first time in history about the ugliest competition imaginable, a race to kill President Kennedy. And Thornley wants the world to know he tried his hardest. I told the Secret Service, I said the only reason I didn't kill him was because I wasn't in the right place at the right time with a gun. The world met Kerry Thornley in 1964 when he testified before the Warren Commission. In 1968, New Orleans District Attorney Jim Garrison charged him with perjury in the conspiracy to kill President Kennedy. Garrison got it all wrong. If I met him, I would say, Garrison, you should not have gone after me for perjury. You should have gone after me for conspiracy to commit murder. I did not commit mur perjury. However, I was involved in a conspiracy to murder John F. Kennedy. In Jim Garrison's book, On the Trail of the Assassin, the basis of Oliver Stone's hit movie, JFK, the former district attorney alleges that Thornley impersonated Oswald to set him up as a patsy in the assassination. Jim Garrison thought that I was impersonating Oswald or that I was coaching others to do so, so as to frame Oswald for the Kennedy assassination so that the true assassins could escape. Garrison thought that I was double, that I double-crossed Oswald, that I set Oswald up for the assassination which I offended me enormously. I said I was glad, I would gladly have killed Kennedy. I wouldn't have betrayed Oswald, though. Thornley is still angry. He would never betray Oswald. They were in the same Marine outfit in 1959. They looked alike. They thought alike. And they acted off the same script of life. They were buddies. Did you like it? He was intellectual. He was well-read. He was intelligent. He